In this mini lecture, mini lecture, we're going to talk about chemical senses, which are taste and olfaction. So taste, gustation, um, one of my favorite senses because um, I love to eat. Um, taste is a chemical sense. Uh, molecules in your food um, uh, interact with taste buds, and that is transduced into a signal that we uh, perceive as taste. We have five primary tastes. We used to only have four, um, but in the last, I think, 10 years, we've added another one. They are sour, sweet, bitter, salty, and umami. And umami is that uh, savory flavor, that one uh, often associates with um, meat. Um, all the other flavors, things that you would um, interpret as chocolate or pineapple or, or um, I don't know, a radish, um, all of those um, flavors are combinations of these five, five primary tastes. And the structures that um, turn those taste molecules into something that you can perceive are your taste buds. You have about, oh, 10,000 taste buds um, throughout your tongue, your soft palate, your pharynx, and your epiglottis. Um, that's a young adult. Little kids have more. Uh, older people have fewer um, because the number of the taste buds declines with age. They consist of sensory cells, uh, taste receptor cells that um, bind to or are activated by um, molecules in your food. And um, those um, taste receptor cells or sensory cells last, oh, about 100 days, and then they're renewed. Um, you have basal cells here that um, divide to become taste receptor cells. These are not neurons, um, but they are cells that will, um, once activated by a taste molecule, will uh, change their ionic concentration. They're contacted by primary uh, sensory neurons and that are going to carry that information back into the central nervous system. So the basal cells will divide, replace the old sensory cells. Um, they're not really neurons. They do divide, um, and they are found on special structures called papillae. So the papillae on your tongue and pharynx and larynx um, are... No, you don't have papillae in your larynx and pharynx. You just have taste buds. Anyway, the four types are the circumvallate papillae, which you can see they're these large, large, large um, circular structures um, towards the back of the tongue. Um, you can see them if you look in the mirror. These have a lot of taste buds. We have fungiform papillae, which are quote unquote mushroom shaped, fungi, fungies like fungi, um, mushroom shaped papillae and they are um, scattered all over the, the surface of the tongue. You also have foliate papillae, and they're located in small trenches along the lateral margins of your tongue. The last kind of papillae is a filiform papillae, and these contain tactile receptors, but no taste buds. Okay, so they increase the friction between the tongue and your food. Um, so they're gonna also because they have some tactile receptors, they're gonna also tell you whether or not um, your, your, uh, your um, pudding is lumpy or smooth. But the bottom line is they help move food around your mouth. And if you're a cat, um, you have amazingly de highly developed filiform papillae um, that are really good for grooming your fur. So four types of papillae, circumvallate, fungiform, and foliate all have taste buds the fiddly form do not. So your tongue has this groove, this sulcal groove here, or you call, it's also called your lingual sulcus. And it is there because the root of the tongue and the body of the tongue have two different, um, they come from two different structures during embryonic development that fuse. And because of that, they carry slightly different nerve fibers with them. 
So the facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, innervates the anterior or presulcal part of the tongue for taste. So all of the taste buds are contacted by branches of, of uh, the seventh cranial nerve that carries that information back to the brainstem, which then goes to the, the thalamus and then goes up to your sensory cortex. The glossopharyngeal nerve is what is going to relay taste from the post sulcal or the posterior one third of the tongue. And again, sensory neurons traveling along cranial nerve nine, back to the brainstem, up to the thalamus, and then up to the cortex for taste. You do have some um, taste buds that are scattered throughout um, the throat and epiglottis. And these are going to be innervated or carry the information relayed by cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. Some but this was really rather minor. Um, I don't think you'd notice if you lost the innervation of those taste buds. Um, and some textbooks don't even include it anymore because it's so minor. Olfaction, your sense of smell, very important sense. Um, and the olfactory receptors are found within the olfactory epithelium, which is way up in the post, the posterior part, uh, superior posterior part of your nasal cavity. Okay. The olfactory epithelium consists of three kinds of cells. You have olfactory receptors, and these are actually neurons. These are bipolar neurons that transduce odor molecules odorant molecules into a neural signal. And those are here. Okay, so this is the air coming in through the, um, the nasal cavity, bringing odorant molecules, and it's going to activate these olfactory receptors. There are also gonna be some supporting cells that help uh, protect and, and support the, these bipolar neurons. And then what's really cool is that there are basal cells that give rise to new olfactory receptors. So to my knowledge, um, and this has held over the years, this is the only exception to that, um, that kind of rule of thumb that neurons don't divide once you're an adult. Your olfactory neurons do divide. You, will have, you do have a stem cell population of olfactory neurons that will divide and replace um, old olfactory neurons that may be damaged or die. And um, this is what tells you that your, your olfactory system is so very important. Now for humans, ah, we're not very good at it. I mean, when you think about your, you know, your dog and how many um, different things they can smell and, and how that they actually would rather smell something than actually look at it, um, you know how important olfaction is um, for all kinds of creatures to find mates, find food, sense danger. We we kind of ignore it to some degree. I mean, we do have we do like our perfumes and stuff, but it's just not nearly as um, vital to us for our daily day to day survival. And so here is where that those olfact that olfactory axons are distributed along that nasal septum all the way po superior and posterior within the, uh, the uh, nasal cavity. Now the olfactory nerves are these little guys, these little bundles of axons that are going from the nasal epithelium, olfactory epithelium through the cribriform plate of the skull and are gonna synapse in the olfactory bulb. Once they synapse in the olfactory bulbs, the olfactory tracks pictured here are what's going to project to areas of your cortex. Okay, they go right to the cortex. So this is important because this is the only sense of the only one of your five senses that does not go through the thalamus before it goes to perception in your cortex. Um, it projects to areas of your cortex that are important for the limbics in the limbic system. For example, the amygdala. 
and then other areas that are important for autonomics, like your hypothalamus. So this is why you have such a visceral and immediate reaction to um, smells. Um, you can walk by and you know smell cookies baking and be transported back to your grandma's kitchen just in a heartbeat um, without even thinking about it. And why maybe when you smell and when, or when you smell oh, just even a whiff of skunk, you know, to get the heck out of Dodge because there's, you don't want to get any closer to that. So that's the basics of olfaction. So what you need to know for your quiz and your exam, what are the five tastes? Be able to list the four types of papillae of the tongue, which of them have taste buds, which of them don't. What cranial nerve relays taste from the anterior two thirds or presulcal part of the tongue? Which cranial nerve relays taste from the posterior or um, post posterior one third or post sulcal area of the tongue? Are olfactory receptors neurons? Do they divide? What is the path of the olfactory nerves? Where do they go to and from? And then what's the significance and what are the olfactory bulb and the olfactory tract? Once you have those concepts, um, you know, down pat, you're ready for your quiz and your exam. Thanks for your attention.